Today I'm going to show you how to paint a winter scene onto a cake. It's not going to be a soup to nuts, batter, baking, frosting situation, just the painting part. You can see step by step how I got this image and watch it come to life. All right, let's get started. So for the cake itself, I whipped up my favorite vanilla cake. You can click up here for that and a nice batch of creamy, dreamy Swiss meringue buttercream. Click up here for that. It is so good and perfect for decorating. I have a huge selection of food colorings. I got this giant box, which I love. I added a tiny bit of food coloring to lots of like kind of tablespoon sized batches of the buttercream and just stirred it to combine and get the right color. First off, let's make that sun. Just dab on some of that yellow buttercream. I used a small round tipped brush, but anything would work. And now I'm gonna add some of the pink. I used a bunch of filbert brushes to add on the buttercream. This is a number eight that I'm using for that pink and then for the light blue. My goal was just to add on the buttercream and kind of get coverage and then worry about smoothing it all out later. I'm using that same filbert brush to dab on some of the darker blues. And once again, just get coverage. It's not gonna look pretty. I was actually really, really concerned when I made this cake because I was like, oh my gosh, this looks horrible. And I know that underpainting, when you're painting an actual painting, you know, it's just like, it doesn't look anything like the photo or the picture, but it was concerning. So <laughs> have some confidence and just get the coverage, get the colors on. Once you're ready, it's time to start smoothing things out. You wanna have the background basically done as much as possible before you start adding on top of it. So here, I'm using a giant number 32 filbert brush, but you could also use like a two inch flat brush or even a pastry brush just to get that nice and smoothed out and it will be, and it'll be creating a smooth gradient. Something to keep in mind though is to move from light to dark, light to dark, or dark to light, dark to light, and then clean your brush off in between swipes because you don't wanna contaminate the pink with too much blue. That's important. You can use smaller brushes to get some of the details kind of closer together. And you can add paint on at this point too. You don't have to just like smooth and only smooth. You can smooth and add, smooth and add. And as you work with this buttercream, here's the thing. It's so deceptive because you start working out the buttercream and you're like, oh, okay, it's one color. But as you work it more, it darkens up. So here you can see that color is really opening up as you're manipulating the buttercream more and those little pieces of food coloring that you initially mixed in are kind of mixing in even more. Okay, so now it's time for the happy little trees. <laughs> I added in a bunch of really, really faint, snowy, almost off-white trees. I wanted them to be in the distance. They're fading away. It's a snowy morning and you just get like the outlines of some of these snow covered trees. Once you get some of that coverage in, you can take a smaller round brush and you know, work some details into it. I want them to look more like trees, not just blobs. So go ahead and work your way up with a bunch of diagonal brush strokes. And yes, in case you're wondering, I only decorated the front of this cake. I left the back blank because I just didn't want to be moving the cake around and spinning it. I wanted it to be nice and still for the camera and it's half the work. <laughs> Once you have your trees down, you can add in a little bit of more light or dark for contrast. I'm adding in some white here for the snow, just to give it some more texture. I don't want it to be totally flat. Now it is time for that all important red barn. Okay, I was a little bit nervous for this part, but just get the, get the paint on. Don't worry about it, because you can go over it. It's not a one and done situation. Using a small like number six or number five filbert brush to just paint on some of that red buttercream. I have my angled roof line, I'm just painting it out. And then occasionally I'll use a toothpick just to outline like where the roof is going. So it's a guide for me as well. Okay, this is a very fancy barn. So it has a cupola on top using a small round tip brush just to get that red on there. I'll be cleaning it up with a toothpick later. I want to tell you that you can also chill this cake at any point. So if it starts getting kind of like a little bit too, too wet, you want to firm things up again, just throw it back in the fridge. And it's nice to get some distance from it too. Take a step back. Take a step back from the painting. Don't be all up in its face the whole time. 
cupola has a nice angled roof covered in snow. So for that, I'm actually just using a toothpick to remove some of the buttercream and show the white underneath. The roof is also covered in snow. I'm adding on a little bit more white buttercream to create some of that texture and just make it really pop. Don't be scared to use that toothpick to clean the sides up, get more definition. It's really hard to get tiny little details in buttercream on a cake. I will tell you, it gets easier with practice, but a toothpick will be our best friend. I'm using it to create little windows and a doorway. A little bit of brown buttercream for the door, and I just want you to see that just by painting up and down with my red buttercream, it creates kind of the illusion of some wooden slats. You know, you can kind of imagine it being an actual structure with just an up and down brush stroke. And even though I said you needed to like just finish the background before you moved on, I took a look at it and thought, you know what? This should be a bit darker. I want some more color in here. So just, just start going for it. <laughs> I'll jump ahead and you can see like just add on a little bit more color, keep moving, and the buttercream's really darkening up as it moves. I chilled the cake, so after you chill the cake and you start brushing at it, it really darkens up. So here, I found this out the hard way. I'm just going to just keep brushing until it darkens up to the right amount. And it's kind of becoming more believable. I really wanted to have a nice kind of magical morning sunrise that only, you know, it's only there for a few moments, but you have the darkness and just that pinkish orange sun coming out there. Okay, now it's time for those trees in the foreground. I'm using almost like a grayish green for the base of the trees, but then we're gonna add in some more green green. I want, to, I want them to have some dimensionality and I like the muted colors, but you need to have some pops, like barn is popping, the sky is a pop, and then the trees are also gonna have some moments too. So now we're using a palette knife to add in that buttercream and it really creates a lot of dimension and makes the trees stand out. There's a play of light and uh, I like the way it looks. It's an easy cheat to get your trees to look you know, happy and bright and really stand out. I'm using a pretty big palette knife and it works, but if you have a smaller palette knife, that would be great for this. You'll add some buttercream onto your palette knife and then wipe away the excess so it's not trailing off the sides. It's just underneath the palette knife and then swoop it on. That's how you get those little Christmas tree branches. Don't be afraid to mix different colors of green. They don't all have to be the same color. Your trees can have some variety and it kind of creates more visual interest and depth too because this tree I'm doing right now is a little bit lighter and it looks like it could be just a bit further away on a misty morning. For smaller trees, I'm using round brushes and you know, just getting some of that buttercream on there. You can see it's almost an impressionistic look. It's not a perfect tree. Don't worry about it looking like the best tree in the world. It's part of a group and you're creating a general sensibility. And it's also your personal style. So my barn will have like a little bit of like a split rail fence and I'm just going to use a very small like number one round brush to add a little bit of buttercream on. You could use a, you could use a toothpick too or whatever you'd like. The foreground looks a little plain to me so here's what's gonna happen. I'm adding in some very, very, very pale grayish blue and that will be giving me the effect of like some snow that is catching the light and having some shadows. Using a palette knife is definitely the easier way to add these snow banks on. You're gonna add some on at the beginning with your palette knife and then just scrape until there's no buttercream left. It gives you a nice kind of like fade, a nice fade of subtle color. For some visual interest, I'm adding a split rail fence in the foreground too. And let me tell you that it is really much easier to paint when you're not trying to block the camera. So I'm at the weirdest angle trying to do this uh, to give you the best view, but just use a small round brush. And here it's like almost black buttercream. Paint it on. Mine's a little bit messed up, but I'm gonna be using a toothpick to clean it up because that's just the easier way. It's not. You could also even pipe it on with a really, really small round piping tip or just by snipping the very tip off of a piping bag. 
All right, that fence is all done. So now let's add some bushes into the foreground. I just wanna like kind of create that depth so it really looks like that barn is not right in your face. It's kind of in the distance a bit. I'm using a small round brush just to add on big globs, messily, of that green buttercream. And if you want, you could add some white on top for some snow. You could even dust some confectioner sugar on top and it'll look like sprinkled snow. As you might've seen in my how to make a Christmas tree cake video, which is like a much more basic version of this, it's just one tree. You can click up here for that if you want though. All right, that looks pretty good. I'm just adding a little bit more snow into the foreground and we're done. Let me know if you'd like to see more of these painterly cakes. I could do one for Easter, for example, or any kind, any kind of holiday you could imagine. All right, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Give it a try. If you have any questions about painting, let me know in the comments. I will answer all of them to my best ability. Thanks so much for watching, and if you like my videos, hit that like button and subscribe.